Hi there, this is Anne Business. You're welcome back to our online course once again. Uh, thanks for joining me. I've done the part one. The first part is on my YouTube channel. You can check down there. Like I said, I wanted to do this online course and sell it, but I decided to make it free so that everybody can benefit from it. So I have the part one down there and I have the part two also there. This is the third part that everybody has been waiting for. And the next part is still coming, but it might take time just like the other ones take time too. <music> So you're welcome back and thanks for joining me. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell to get notified just in case I drop the next part, which is the part four of this YouTube online catfish course. My name is Simeon o. James. I'm one of your youngest fish farmer in Nigeria. So all I deal with is all about agriculture. I deal with crops, I deal with uh, livestock and everything that has to do with agriculture. But this video is only meant for those who are into catfish farming that are looking for solution one way or the other or that are looking for lecture one way or the other or that are running for one seminar or the other so that they can perfect their fish farming work. This online course, I believe, will help you well as well. So let's go into today's course. The last one I did, we stopped at number seven. That is challenges in catfish farming. So the people that watched the video said the video is very, very educative. So I'm advising you to check on the video. If this is the only video you come across, we still have two of it down there and another one will still be joining this video. So we talk about the challenges, all those things. You are going to get it in the other video from the part one, part two, and this is the part three. This video, now I'm going to start with uh, ways to reduce the cost of feed in catfish farming. All of us know that the price of feed as out of last year is cheaper than the price of feed we are buying nowadays. We have ways you can do to reduce the cost of feed that you are going to make profit when you sell your fish. It won't be like when you sell your fish, you reduce all the money you used to buy the feed and the fish and what you're having left is not something you are going to be happy about. But when you are applying all these uh, ways you can take to reduce the cost of feed, then it's going to work better for you. Like you are not going to spend much, you are going to spend less and you will possibly earn more. If you channel all your energy and if you do it as I am teaching you right now. We have a lot of system, a lot of substance, I mean food, I mean feed you can give to your catfish in place of floating feed or sinking feed, in place of already made feed. There are other feed you can give to your uh, fish that they are going to grow well and do well and when you sell them you will make money. First, you think about maggot. Have you heard of it before? You can get it from carcass. Carcass is a deadly decaying animal, right? So you can get it from there. You can get it from animal feces such as uh, poultry uh, feces. There are many ways you can get the maggots but the one that you can easily get is from the poultry so from the chicken feces so you can easily get it from there and when giving it to them you shouldn't panic because it has no harm to them even if you have a lot of feces like the maggot is not clean enough giving it to your fish is not risky but the only problem you are going to face is just water pollution and if your water is over polluted then it will affect the growth of your fish and also affect the health of your fish which is not good enough so maggot is one of the first thing you can give to your catfish in place of feed it doesn't kill it doesn't reduce in fact it will make them to grow and even do better it's just like they're eating fresh thing two you should consider intestine too, chicken intestine from any chicken slaughtering house. Any slaughtering house, wherever they are killing chicken, you can just patronize them. All the waste they are collecting from the chicken, the intestine, just as you are seeing it in the video, you collect it, then you give it to your fish without cooking. But this one have a little problem. It doesn't kill, but it does 
kill. It doesn't kill in such a way that will get you worried, but it will kill them when they overfeed, like they take it over. You know, it is fish when you give them something they like. Fish like intestine and it actually make them to grow well. It will make them to grow bigger, expand and their body, their texture is going to be fresh and be okay. Chicken intestine is very, very good for your catfish. If you are not doing that before, please just try it for once. Try to get chicken intestine and give it to your fish till you crop them at five or six months or four months that you usually keep them. It's not that they are not going to eat other feed. Though. They will be eating the already made feed you are buying for them, but you are going to be slotting it maybe once or two times in a week. If you are getting it frequently on Tuesday, you are getting it on Saturday or on Friday, and it's twice in a week, your fish are going to do better than just giving them already made feed or your local feed throughout. So this is the way it will affect your fish. When you give something fish like, when you give it to them, they are going to eat, consume, consume, consume it because they like it. So they will eat it over. So when they eat it over, the next day you are going to see mortality of, the range shouldn't be more than one to five. Is that you see two, you see three, you see four, or you see one, or you see five. If it is too much, then you see six, just in a day. It's not that the thing, not that the intestine really have problem in them. No, it's because they over feed the overeat it why does it kill them it's because it doesn't digest quickly that is why the intestine kill them that is why you are seeing mortality it doesn't digest quickly and they overtake it so because their tummy do not go down as fast as it should be that is why they die if you feed your catfish with intestine like today that you are watching this video you feed them today tomorrow you are not giving them any feed they are not taking anything throughout tomorrow so next tomorrow you are going to give them the already made feed please don't feed them with intestine twice like you feed them today tomorrow you leave them to rest next tomorrow you give them intestine not advisable number three have you heard of on arch egg before on arch egg are from the chicken uh hatchery where they hatch a chicken. The eggs that remain from the uh, incubator is the one we call on hatch. You know, it is not all the eggs you take to the incubator that will hatch at once. For all of us that are watching the chicken hatchery, we all know uh, what I'm saying, we all understand. So we have on hatch egg from the chicken hatchery. They may take something like 100 eggs there and something like uh, 50, 70 may hatch and the remaining 30 will hatch or 80 will hatch and the remaining 20 will hatch. So that on hatch plus some of the dead um, chicks that comes with the on hatch because some will still die. So from that industry you pack everything all together. If they sell it to you, fine. If they don't, then you buy yeah, because uh, since they notice it is good for that fish, they started inflating the price as well but it is still cheap you know when you cook egg when you fry egg or you boil egg it tends to develop and swell up more than its uh, original size so when you buy the on arch you go to your farm you break it it's something that smell if you can do it only so it's something that smell you break it you try to at least some of the uh, egg that haven't break you try to break it then you cook it so when you cook it you allow it to get cold a little bit don't serve hot please then you give it to your catfish they are going to eat if you give it to them throughout they are going to eat and the second day you continue with uh, your feed so you are you can do that like uh, twice or one times in a week or depending on how you are getting the on arch as well number four all of us know much about mortality mortality in form of dead chicken dead goat dead dog dead anything dead any animal dead you can just take it it's only human you can give to your <laughs> catfish but even if you don't want to give them dog if you don't want to suck them serve them dog like some people some religious people have a trait for that you no know? so if you don't want to give them dog it's not a problem so you give any mortality you see either it is chicken when you see chicken you just throw it inside within two days they will finish it and if it is something like goat or ram you see that you want to give it to them if you can roast it like burn all the ear then you divide the tummy you dissect it then throw it inside they are going to like it and if you don't have the time or maybe it irritates you to do it in such a way you can just try to divide to dissect it you cut the tummy so that they can easily take the intestine from it and eat so you cut it then you throw it inside the 
pond your fish are going to eat it number five which is the last one that i'm still going to tell you is the blood meal i do one against adding blood meal to your feed your local feed especially if you want to do your local feed dried blood meal if it is too much it will cause a uh, crackhead which is not good if you have experience of crackhead once you wouldn't love to do fish farming again reduce the level of blood meal you add to your feed local feed before you pelletize your feed so blood me it's a fresh one i'm talking about you get it from the slaughtering house where they slaughter chicken where they slaughter cow where they slaughter pigs you know they are going to collect the blood so you get all the blood together then you can get uh, some things from the chicken too like all these uh is it gleet or what is it called some uh feces from the chicken too you get it so you can mix it with gary you can mix it with uh yeah i think only gary and the, this thing the on arch you can mix it with uh waste bread the leftover bread you can mix it with it and cook it together you can as well mix it with gary too the same thing the blood meat you can mix it with gary then you cook it and you give it to your fish it is very very rich as well in fact blood meal is something like 89 percent protein why other feed like uh, other ingredients such as uh maize soya and everything they follow it blood meal is 80 something percent protein so which is very very good so if you can do that too it's part of it please all this feed i just told you include the intestine the on arch the blood meal the maggot and everything maggots can possibly work in concrete tank but the rest cannot go with concrete or tarpaulin most of this is only suitable for earthing pond for those who have earthing pond alone you can go with all this feed i just listed you can prepare all this feed and give it to your cartridge but if you have concrete or you have tarpaulin please don't try to use them inside i am begging and i am warning at the same time so i move to number nine number nine is reparation and preparation of catfish pond it may be earthen pond it may be a tarpaulin pond it may be a concrete pond whichever pond you are using so um talking about the preparation and the reparation so there are some of our ponds that need preparation and there are some of our pond that need preparation for instance if we have eating pond some places are breaking you know you are going to uh, take care of it like i meant some places that is a, a reparation rather so and if it is to you know clean the inside especially if we are using eating pond if the pond is collapsing like uh, the pond is tearing at one side you know you are going to do sandbag right that is a uh, reparation and if you want to stock your fish new you know you are going to do the mud and you do other things that is preparation all together that is number nine preparation and reparation so how do you prepare a thin pond if you want to prepare a thin pond the first thing you are going to do is to uh, drain out the water the whole of the water then you demold all the mud that is inside the water you pack it out the liquid sand the liquid soil inside the pond you clear everything out if you can give it more feet you give if it is not deep enough you give if it is deep enough you just pack all the mold and that is all about the first part then the second part you get your formalin chemical or you get your salt industrial salt or you get your uh lime so these three things will help you to prepare the pond well when you finish the the modding they help you pack all the mud out then you buy your lime so when you buy your lime lime is what you're seeing on the screen it's a white dust this thing but it's a chemical so you sprinkle it like you dust it inside the hole of the pond so you leave it for seven days after seven days your pond will receive life it will be lively again and you'll be seeing little little insects swimming on top of the water note if you really want to confirm if the lime work inside the pond you put it then take note of the color if the color of your water is yellow before or it's a kind of whitish in color before the water will turn greenish after seven days of applying the uh, lime 
it will turn greenish in color that means your pond is totally fertilized then you add salt by industrial salt the one you think will be enough for your pond so you sprinkle it too inside the pond before you stock your catfish so that is the number one the number two thing you can still do to prepare your pond after demolding is to get formalin chemical the formalin chemical so when they demold and you still see the pond is still fresh i'm still talking on eating pond if the pond is still fresh then you take the formalin chemical you buy it it's a chemical like water like this that is the color just like water whitish if you open it like this your nose you would have even perceived that no this chemical is not something you can just sniff in very very aggressive in nature so when it comes to sniffing so even if you sniff it water will be coming out of your eye straight away so you get the formalin chemical you sprinkle it inside the whole of the pond then you add salt to it as well that too is another way to prepare your pond before the nest stock you can leave it for something like three or four days too before you stock your fish so let's come to concrete pond so how do we prepare our concrete pond before the nest stock or how do we repair it for instance if any place is breaking inside your concrete pond you know cement is what you use it to do so you are going to use cement as well to amend it so when you use cement to amend it you leave it to dry then you wash it after you wash that spot then you stock that is how to repair any breakage in concrete pond how do you prepare it how to prepare it is very simple you take your hard brush this is hard brush the one they used to wash out is a vehicle tire or machine tire you know it's a vehicle the motorcycle so there's a hard brush they used to wash the tires so you use it you scrub the whole of the body to scrape all the agues the greenish this thing so wash it and make it clean before you stock you can put salt inside the water you are using to wash and you can as well put detergent inside the water so when you don't use water to wash it thoroughly and you leave it to dry that is how to prepare concrete pond you leave it to dry for a whole day before you put more water inside for the next stock so that is how to repair and how to prepare a concrete pond how about tarpaulin pond or rubber basin it is all the same rubber basin you can get detergent as well so you do the process of the uh, concrete too you scrub you wash it thoroughly then you leave it to dry as well before you stock your fish that is how to prepare and how to repair ponds etting pond you do sandbag you know you cover the side concrete you amend with cement and tarpaulin you amend with tarpaulin part so you glue it together and you amend that place also you shouldn't forget that in etting pond you will have to cover it with nets you use nets to cover it same way is concrete especially when it is exposed but when it is not exposed you don't cover it maybe under the shed in your house around your house maybe in your compound so you don't need to cover with net but if it is exposed in the farm or outside you have to cover it so that other animals won't come to pick them animals like birds uh, snakes and uh, reptiles of any kind will just enter inside and they'll be eating your fish little by little until you then finish the rest of the uh, fish which is not okay so you should remember covering it too with a uh, net don't let me forget your inlet and outlet they must be tight especially if you are using concrete pond you should check all your inlets or your outlets if they are tight if they are well fixed so that when erosion come you won't have problem or when it's time for you to discharge your water you won't have problem doing that when your fish are matured or when you're having a kind of emergency with your pond either in concrete or in earthen pond please let your inlet and your outlets fix them before you stock your fish it's part of preparation as well number 10 which is the last part of this catfish online course which is the past three part three the last part of it is the cost of stocking 1000 pieces of catfish if yours is more than 1000 then you multiply all the estimate i'm giving you on this 1000 by that amount if yours is more than 1000 maybe you are stocking 2000 or you're stocking three ten thousand or twenty thousand then you multiply what i'm giving you by five or by ten or by twenty uh that is the number of the fish you want to stock then you will get the answer to what you want to stock 
for instance now due to the high cost of feed and everything outside now for 1000 pieces of catfish you are going to spend almost let me say between 500,000 to 600,000 naira before it is usually 300 to 350 but now it is 500 to 600,000 naira so 600,000 naira depending on the month you want to take them to if it is between one to four months then it may cost you between that 400,000 but if it exceeds four months to five months then you should be thinking of that 500 going to 600,000 naira you know they are going to eat i gave you estimate on the feet already that they are the 1000 are going to eat they may take something like a uh, between that 1000 uh 300 kg 1200 plus kg that is the amount of feed the 1000 pieces are going to take for the time you are going to keep them and the cost i have given it to you plus the amount you used to buy the fish everything will be going up to 500 to 600 thousand naira so if you are not prepared for that amount then don't think of stocking 1000 pieces of catfish in this catfish business especially these days everything is now costly every day they keep on increasing the price of feed and that have been a serious problem in this catfish business so if you are nowhere prepared please don't stock more than your money can uh cater for your money can rear so that is all about the third part of this online course if you find this video interesting please don't forget to smash the like button don't forget to share and don't forget to drop a comment thank you so much for viewing and thank you for waiting for the third part and also for waiting for the fourth one it will come to your way i might not say shortly but you are going to get it so far you subscribe to my youtube channel and so far you stay on this youtube channel so thank you so much for watching